This is Tabletop Deathmatch, a competition to find the next great tabletop game. It was entertaining. I don't think I would buy this game. Everything sort of flowed logically. Game designers from all over the country sent their prototypes to us at Cards Against Humanity. We picked eight finalists, and now we're bringing them to Gen Con, the biggest tabletop gaming convention in the world, where they're going to pitch their prototypes to our panel of industry-leading judges. One game will win a first printing paid for by Cards Against Humanity and be crowned the winner of Tabletop Deathmatch. Feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good. It's been a busy week, busy weekend, but I like it. I'm excited. I I think the judges are uh, experts in what they do, and they're gonna see um, just the amount of quality that everyone has brought to the table, and it's gonna be a really tough decision for them. Um, you know, I'm here for the opportunity, and I met a lot of great people, and so if I win, great, and if I don't, um, I'm still gonna keep moving forward with Bruin USA because I think it's got a lot of steam and a lot of momentum behind it. Hey Adam, thanks so much for coming to show us Bruin USA. Thank you for the opportunity, I'm super excited to be here. Can you give us like a really quick pitch of the game? Sure, Bruin USA is a lighter Euro game, uh, plays two to five players under 60 minutes. Um, players act as a startup brewery at the inception of the craft beer revolution. Players are tasked to collect key resources, uh, launch a product line of liquid gold or craft beer, and while strategically competing for region control across the nation. Let's meet uh, our liquid gold. These are the judges who will be playing your game. Uh, to my left, we have Paul Peterson, creator of Smash Up and Guillotine, and Elisa Delfo, the retail manager of Card Kingdom, Rodney Thompson, designer of Lords of Waterdeep, Mike Selinker, creator of the Pathfinder Adventure Card Game, Luke Crane, creator of Mouse Guard and Burning Wheel, and Sherry Spiro, president and founder of Ad Magic. You wanna come over and set up your game so we can take a look? Sure thing. All right. Adam, uh, so can you tell us a little bit about um, designing this prototype and, and bringing it to this point? Who, who are you working with? Um, in terms of the artwork and illustration, I've been working with Machinaro and Chris Gibbons. Did you get experience working with them? It looks like you guys put a pretty cool looking um, prototype together. We, we had quite the experience, I would say. Um, Maki and Chris really stepped up with, uh, you know, they were able to commit assets to me and really just blew it out of the park, like knocked my socks off cool, so. The prototype looks awesome. I can't wait to uh, see the game and imagine all of the delicious beers that will be made. Um, so I'm gonna step back and let you um, run through a few rounds with the judges. Cool. Okay, so in the rule book, the, the first player that, to, to move is the last person to have bonged a beer. So this is the Game Ball Craft Beer, and so if you're bonging beers, you need to go first. My mom does. It's been a long but... time. It's be I bet it's you, though. Uh, you think so? I was in college. Yeah, yeah it's, it's re more recent. It's 12 years ago. I think you're it, Rodney. Okay. Yeah. It may have been within the last 12 years, but I don't know I don't that for a fact. <laughs> well, we'll edit that embarrassing fact out in post. I like the theme a lot. I was really surprised how much I liked it. There's no difficulty getting into it because I've got some experience. All right, so I guess let's uh, fire this up. I'm gonna draw one and do we replace immediately? Replace immediately. Okay. And then be able to draw one more, right? Yes. Okay. So you can pick up one and draw one? Yeah, you, you could pick up a face one, face up one, you can, and then you can draw a face down Can you pick up one. two face? You can pick up two face up, you can pick up two face down. I mean, not to put too fine a point on it, but it's basically the Ticket to Ride mechanism. Uh, a lot's been said about comparing Bruin USA to Ticket to Ride, and I think that they both have a very similar feel to them, but that's pretty much where the similarity ends. And so uh, it, it, I think that the comparison is a little off there. They both feel very similar, which is why it's easy to draw that, but I, in the end, I, they're very dissimilar games. When a player launches a beer, they're, they're encouraged to name it as well, so if you have some crazy additives going into it, like we can be a little fun about that. I love that. that right? Like yeah. sit cloth beer or whatever. Yeah. Oh, I like this. Not sure, I like sick pop. Beer. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. I you launch. I think we're gonna launch a beer. Which one are we launching? All right, let's let's see if we screwed up. We, all right. Uh, well, we're market mm -hmm. testing it, testing it right now. Yeah. So it's a coffee stout. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know yet. It's called sick We're, 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 we're <laughs> <laughs> No, if it adds citrus, then. It well, can. I haven't said it has anything yet. I like playing brew in USA because it was easy to play. And I liked the interaction between the judges when we were playing. I thought we had a good time, and uh, I enjoyed the beer puns. So we could go here, we could go here, yeah. we could go here, we could go there. That one has 
three. It, so oh. you get two in that area, you get the sure. majority. Remind me what it's the cunning businesswoman over here. Just saying. Oh. I think it's worth noting here that I don't drink beer. I don't like beer, I don't drink beer. I don't like beer culture. I don't like beer bongs or bros or any of that stuff. So it was interesting for, for me to see the, the thematic barrier flip in this game where the theme didn't interest me at all. Um, it was easy for me to walk in and, and play it and, and, uh, and enjoy it. Yeah, nice launch. And you launched a beer, so you're gonna place a bottle cap on it right away? And so that now is a 12 quality beer, but it's actually plus one because it has a bottle cap. So anytime you're in a brew so fest, 13. it's already a 13. Wait, yeah. Yeah, they, they, they launched it with an extra citrus. And an extra, citru and an extra citrus, citrus and so coffee. An additional. Two? Additional one. You are the first one in the region, too, so you get an additional two bottle caps on this beer. So this, is, this is a mega beer. beer. Right. And wow, you are you're an Uber player there. And you actually well, control the region now, yeah, and yeah. so this is your card. We're gonna launch into Portland. Thanks. We have We're we have about our name. We have our grain. We're very efficient. We have our hops. A little bit too much water, but we'll fix that in later. But we've just exactly the right amount of yeast. Maybe it should be efficient pale ale. <laughs> okay, so we have our efficient pale ale into Portland. Wow, so you get one bottle cap on that right away. I'm going to Portland, so I'll try it next week. Yeah. And because you're the two first. more for the. Exactly. Did uh, Game Crafter do oh, the, so the bottle caps? Uh, this is from my own homebrew store, actually. So, uh, I mean, I, I think it's a really important component of the game because it, it's so tactile, but it's relevant. Did they too. come like this? They did. I love the bottle caps. Uh, they're an inexpensive component, but they add a, a genuine feel to the uh, theme of the game. And overall, I just, uh, I think it's a, a very simple game to manufacture. And when it's done right, it should come out fantastic. So how, how long ago did you come up with this idea? So um, I, I was newly on the idea a few months ago, but I actually was listening to a podcast and heard about Tabletop Deathmatch refresh my memory, and I said, I wonder what, where this thing is this year? And it was literally a week before the competition submission. And then I got the email and I was like, oh crap. Now I a week? Now I have to really nail this sucker out, yeah. You did this in a week? I mean, you had the idea of kind yeah. of brewing, yeah. no pun intended. <laughs> yeah, well, and so, a big part of you know getting your feedback is playtesting, right? So I have a I have a great gaming group at work that I leverage for excellent feedback um, on some of like the Brewfest events and mechanics, and just making it interactive because I think that's the downside of you know a lot of the Euro games or you know even the lighter Euro games like we want interaction, right? So you really pushed the mechanics in the last week? Yeah, yeah. I You're think kidding. we had three or four different designs in the last week. Yeah. That's awesome. That is really uh, that's like a. You know what it reminds me of? Like a stroke of inspiration. <laughs> like when you write a song. Like I, I, I've, you know, I've written like a song a in five minutes. It's a, it's a stroke of inspiration. Absolutely. But you had thought about it before. You just didn't have it all together. Exactly. How much playtesting have you done overall? Uh, I think 11 total now, um, and with 30, 31 different people. The number one thing I would do for this game is I would playtest it and playtest it and playtest it. I mean, it's close and it's in really good shape, but the the level of polish that you'll get just from a little bit of extra play will be worth it in the end because you'll take this game from something that is good and people enjoy to something that's great and people are recommending to their friends and people are giving out as gifts. I think so. Hey guys. Hello. Are we stuck with it? I figured we might want to get you guys in the mood. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Sometimes, yes. Yes, Cards Against Humanity for something, they'll deliver. All right, now, now we can play the game. Is there any reason not to throw every every adjunct that you have? You know, I, you know, I, I don't think there is. I think late in the game it's a little more powerful because you can actually keep adding and adding and adding, and then you're going to get basically a sure winner, like almost a surefire win late in the game, and that may upset one of those regional control situations that is really on the border. You could really get value out of a whole lot more test 